Hello there. My name is Lindsay, and I'm a homemaker. I live with my husband, Trent, and things haven't been great between us lately because of a very special someone who always seems to torment me. Yes, folks, you might have guessed correctly, I'm talking about my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law, Margaret, is definitely a handful. She always makes it a point to demean and dehumanize me at any chance she can get. But there was a particular moment in which the straw simply broke the camel's back. On this stage, she had gone too far, and I just had to get my revenge. Margaret was making one of her famous monthly visits, in which she would require the whole world to be satisfied. She would complain about improper dishes that were being used, even down to the type of napkins that were on display. She had a problem with everything. So, it goes without saying that I dreaded these events, especially because she put all of the pressure and blame on me. She'd always say, since you're the homemaker, you have to make sure that this job is done with absolute professionalism. I understand her point, but she also needs to understand that being a homemaker isn't easy. It's just like any other job, sometimes you might not work as hard, other days, you might slack off, other days, you might enjoy it and perform at your best capacity. And still, there will be other days in which you simply can't take anymore and have to take a vacation or personal day just to rest and reset. But of course, Margaret was brought up in a different time than I was, so she is used to experiencing such outdated and harmful ideologies. Lindsay, the arrangements are ready. My mom will be home anytime soon now. Yes, honey, everything's ready. We're just waiting for her to get here at this point. Okay, great. You know how she can be sometimes. Oh, trust me, I know all too well. I know she can be a bit much sometimes, but please continue to bear with her. We only do this once a month, so please just try and be a bit more patient for me. Fine, fine. I will endure for now, because I love you. Thanks, babe. A couple of minutes later, Margaret arrived and began her usual spiel of hating all of the hard work that I put into making sure that she was comfortable. Hello, my beautiful babies, how are you all doing? Oh, Lindsay, how could you mismatch the throw pillows like this? Don't you know anything about feng shui? Hello, Margaret. How are you? Not well, I'm afraid. This simply won't do. It will be bad for my aura. Please take away this cushion at once. I obliged, and for the rest of the night, I managed to apply to everything that she was telling me through gritted teeth and a twitching eye. The evening was coming to an end, and it was time which she would normally head home, but for some reason, she stayed for an extra hour, which wasn't too bad until that hour became two hours, then three hours, then four hours, and finally, it appeared as though she wanted to stay the night. This behavior was peculiar, and she overstayed her welcome. Even Trent was sending me confused expressions, but I was just as confused as he was. Finally, Trent hinted at the elephant in the room. Wow, it is getting super late. I should be heading to bed, got a busy day at work tomorrow. Mom, would you like for me to call you a cab? Oh, no, actually I'm fine. But it's so late, would you perhaps like to stay the night? You know you're always welcome. All you have to do is ask. Margaret took a deep breath. She looked like she was about to drop some top-secret information that has been weighing heavy on her heart. Yes, I know, thank you. It's just that I don't want to go home. I want to stay here. Yes, Mom, Lindsay just said that. We have no problem with you staying the night. See, that's just the thing. I don't want to simply stay for just the night. I want to stay for a while. There was a pause. We didn't know what had gotten into her. She wanted to stay here for longer. I mean, there's also nothing wrong with that, I guess. 
I know it must be quite lonely for you, ever since Dad died. It's okay, you can stay for the night, and tomorrow you and Lindsay can go to the house and pick up your essentials. You're always welcome in this home. As much as I hated what she did at times and dreaded her visit, I could tell that she was quite lonely, so I felt bad and agreed to let her stay with us. I made the mistake of not inquiring how long she'd be staying, you see, because one night turned into one month, and one month turned into six months, and before long, she had begun renting out her house to other people. In the meantime, she had practically moved into our home. Ever since that night, she has stayed with us, and a year had gone by. I was getting fed up with this arrangement. Margaret and I would be home all day together, which was becoming insufferable, especially because she'd always make it a point to nitpick everything that I did as a homemaker. Oh, Lindsay, don't you know that you're supposed to do it this way? No, no, not like that. The issue wasn't even that she was correcting me on things that genuinely needed to be fixed. Don't get me wrong, I am the first person to always be willing to heed constructive criticism, but the things that Margaret wanted to change were so minuscule, and honestly, they were just her insane personal preferences. I would often bring up these issues to Trent, who would brush them off, because, in his eyes, his dear mother could do no wrong. But after a year of living like this, I had enough. I put my foot down and approached Trent about this. You know, your mother has been causing us problems ever since she moved in a year ago. I get that she's feeling lonely, but I don't think she can continue to stay here. She can't respect me as the homemaker of this house. I get that she likes things to be a specific way, but if she feels so strongly about it, why not go back and live in her own home with her own rules? Don't talk about mother that way. How could you be so cruel, Lindsay? Yes, you are the one making decisions in this house, but she's my mother. She could be considered the matriarch of this household. Even you will show her respect. To teach you a lesson, you will be cooking all of her meals from now on. Excuse me? You heard me. I will no longer have this insolence in this house. You can cook all of her meals for her, and I better not hear any more complaints about it. That's an order from your husband. I was completely shocked and stunned into silence. I had no words. I was so surprised that he would speak to me this way and promote such an unreasonable request. For the past year, Margaret and I would take turns cooking, which I will admit was a nice change of pace from being the sole cook in the house. It made sense for her to contribute as well, what with all of her special requests and conditions for everything. She was obsessive, so it was best that she also prepared the meals. But now, now I have to do whatever she wants. I would simply die working myself to the bone like that. The argument ended badly, with me trying to appeal to his better nature, but I had officially ticked them off, and as he said, he didn't want to hear anything else. I felt stuck, but I guess I had to do what I had to do, and so from that moment onward, I was subject to be the Cinderella of the household, tending and catering to her every whim. It should also be noted that ever since this new practice was put in place, Margaret appeared to be incorporating even more complicated nuances and intricacies in her dishes. She would want the fanciest things, as well as exotic items that weren't even available in our neighborhood. I'd have to order them from outside at times, which I thought was absolutely preposterous. It's as though she wanted to live in a five-star hotel without paying for any of the expenses. This new practice had been implemented for a total of three months, and things were getting out of control. Lindsay, darling, for dinner tonight, I would like frog's legs and truffle risotto. Did she think I was Gordon Ramsay or something? These requests were getting too out of hand. How about chicken parm instead? Oh, Lindsay, how could you ask me such a thing? I ask you this one simple thing, and you can't give it to me? Should I tell Trent about this? No, I guess I'll see what I can do. 
It was getting pretty late, and a lot of the grocery stores were closed. I searched online and found that the only place that was open this late and selling those food items was a two-hour drive away. I called Margaret to tell her of my findings, and this is what she said, Oh, I guess it's all right then. You can come back home. I guess I'll just have a bland dinner unless you don't mind taking the trip, of course. I mind. I don't have time to do all of this, Margaret. But you are the homemaker. It is your duty to make sure your guests are well tended to. You're not a guest, though. You've been living with us for a year now. Well, I don't know that you felt so strongly about it. Just come home and make me that chicken parm. I got home to a very cross-looking Trent and a devious-looking Margaret. Lindsay, do you want to tell me what's going on? Gladly. I told Margaret that there was no way that I was going to drive for hours just for some frog's legs and truffles. I mean, how insane is that? Babe, as much as I do agree with you there, you could have said it nicer, you know? Mom here is our guest, and as she, she's been living with us for a year. Guests are only here from a month, maybe two, and then they're out. She is no longer considered a guest, and honestly, I have a lot I need to do. I can't keep up with her demands anymore. She can continue living here, but I can't cook all of her food anymore. I'm done. No, you're not. I demanded that you cook for mother, and cook for her you will. I don't want to hear you complain again. You will treat my mother with respect. Margaret was hiding behind Trent, trying to stifle a laugh, knowing that he'd protect her no matter what. She was evil incarnate, and she knew that what she was doing was unreasonable and unhealthy. Okay, but what are we to do about the inconsiderate requests that are made at such awkward hours? That is true, Mom. You have to at least give Lindsay a list of groceries for foods that you will want to have throughout the week so that she can prep accordingly. But planning everything takes out the joy of eating exotic and rare foods. I know, I know, but please, at least try and understand where Lindsay's coming from. I swear to God, if you close your eyes, you would have thought that Trent was the parent in this situation. Margaret was acting like a spoiled brat, how peculiar, since she'd mothered several children. She reluctantly agreed, and on the next morning, she dropped a list of things she wanted in my lap. The list was ridiculous, and I couldn't even pronounce half of the things on there. Not only that, but the grocery list was over three pages long. To this day, I cannot figure out how just one woman wants so much. I went ahead and bought the things that needed to be bought, even going as far as going on the two-hour grocery journey to obtain all the ridiculous items she wished for. I roamed all the aisles, appearing to put every item in the store into the cart. That's just how much stuff she wanted. People were giving me odd stares, and if I was in their position, I'd do that too, because I was now looking like a spoiled brat. As I was ending my exhausting grocery trip, I saw something from my peripheral vision. In the corner of my eye was a dazzling red and black bottle. With my interest peaked, I approached it and saw that it was none other than the famous hot sauce that was known to make grown men cry. It had a Scoville rating of 1.5 million, and at that moment, my evil primate instincts popped up and gave me an idea. I battled back and forth between buying the bottle or not, but I ended up getting it anyway. I bought all the items and made my way home to appease my insatiable mother-in-law with this newfound ingredient that was not asked for. I had to make it a mission to hide it meticulously because my mother-in-law was always rummaging around for things. I was debating as to whether or not I should do what I was thinking of doing, and I was about to just bite my pride and be the bigger person when Margaret approached me in the evening that day to tell me something interesting. Lindsay, may I speak with you for a moment? Sure thing, Ma, what's up? I just want to tell you that I appreciate you and all the work you do regarding this household. Oh, do you mean that? Yes, I genuinely do. 
That's all I ever wanted to hear, you know? I just wanted to be recognized as an important member of this family because I do work hard, despite what others might think. You do work hard, but you don't work hard enough. Excuse me? You heard me. Do you know how hard it was for me back in the day? We had to go through 10 times the work and stress that spoiled babies do nowadays. I'm sorry that things were tough for you back then, but why should life be about struggling? Isn't that why we want what's best for our children, so that they can live better lives than what people have old did? What exactly is the point of being jealous of seeing someone not struggle? Jealous, me? How dare you? That's such an outlandish thing to accuse someone of. How could you say something like that? Listen, Margaret, things are better now, and trust and believe, my children will also grow up in worlds that are just better to live in. That's how development works. Would you rather that we all suffer? I was being genuinely kind and compassionate, trying to appeal to her softer side and unmask her hard exterior, but what she said next was unforgivable. You are nothing but a wench in a stubborn housewife. You're rude and inconsiderate, and you will never amount to anything. Just stick to your job as the scholarly maid and hoover wielder you are. What did you just say to me? You think you can speak to me that way? Yes, I can, because you're worthless. One thing I would like to advise evil and malicious people, make sure that the people who you offend aren't in charge of handling your food. Now go make my dinner. Sure thing. I went into the kitchen and went to work. I prepared an elaborate and special meal for my lovely and appreciative mother-in-law, with the special ingredient being the famous hot sauce that I bought. All the while, I was praising myself for deciding to buy the hot sauce. I guess part of me always knew that Margaret had these horrid perceptions and feelings inside of her. Nonetheless, I did the needful and presented the dish to her. Here you go, Margaret. Your coconut crusted shrimp and foie gras with some rice, caviar, and truffles on the side to use at your leisure. That's more like it. This is how I should be treated. Oh, you're so right. This is exactly how you should be treated. I sat across from her at the table, thanking God that Trent wasn't around to disrupt my plans as he was on a business trip, so it was just Margaret and me in the house. She took the first bite. I mean, it isn't a five-star quality dish, but then again, what do I expect from a simple housemaid? It will do for now. Oh, what is this strange feeling, Lindsay? What on earth did you add to this dish? Whatever do you mean? The dishes are fine. Let me try the foie gras. No, no, Lindsay, but by this point, Margaret got up and went to the kitchen, screaming and flailing around like a headless chicken. I did my best to retain my laughter, but when I found her in the kitchen with her face and chest drenched in milk, I couldn't help but burst out laughing. You! What did you do to me? I taught you a very much needed lesson. Nobody comes into my house and says those awful things to me. I'm sorry that your life was horrible, you must have gone through some horrendous things to become the evil person you are today. I welcomed you into my home one year ago, and this is how you treat me. I hope that this spiciness is a reminder of how your same callous behavior is not appreciated or welcome. From now onwards, you will be cooking your food if you so wish to have these awful and fancy dishes. If you'd like to be a normal human being instead of being a spoiled, bratty baby, we can cook together on the days when I'll be cooking for the family. There will always be a place for you if you so wish to partake. You're lucky that I'm not throwing you out of this house. You better learn how to respect people, or I will see to it that everything that you put in your mouth tastes like that special hot sauce I added. Margaret was unable to speak, mainly because of the hot sauce, but also because she was just speechless. For once in her life, she was completely silenced. 
A couple of days have gone by, and Trent returned from his business trip. We had all sat down to eat lunch together. Mother, why is it that you've resumed making your food? Oh, no particular reason. I just enjoy cooking, and you know, Lindsay has been working so hard. I thought that I would decrease the burden of cooking for our family but also making my food. All right, as long as you're happy. Yes, Margaret, as long as you're happy. You are happy, right? Yes, of course, my darling. Don't worry about me. I won't ever complain again. And that was that. Ever since that day, she had never complained about my food again. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.